Good day everyone, I'm Dave, and today we're talking hammers. These are one of the most common sets of hammers that pretty well everyone has at home, but there's actually hundreds of different types of hammers, specialty for each different type of job that's out there, and we're going to go through a few of them on today's video. One of the first sets of hammers we're going to talk about, very special, um, are basically soft types of mallets. These ones you can get hammers, of course, with any kinds of different handles you can think of, wood, fiberglass, steel, as well as different kinds of heads. This particular head, brass head, purpose of that is, of course, if you're working on metal, you're not going to damage it because it's much softer than steel would be. As well, if you're working in an explosive area and you're hammering away, you're not going to cause sparks. Copper head, another idea, again, for soft metal, so you're not damaging steel. And as well, if you're doing welding, these make great backing plates because when you're doing welding, it doesn't stick to the head. Roofing axe. Again, same idea. You have a, in this case, a waffle head, which we'll talk about in a bit. And of course your axe and your marking pin for marking your spacing. Welding hammers for chipping away when you're, after you do your welding, chipping away the slag off the weld. Then we have bodywork or metal working hammers where you have various different shapes for contouring the metal as you're doing your pounding. And another little grouping we have is different styles of mallets. This is often called a chisel mallet or a jointer's mallet. And the whole idea for, for that is pretty commonly used in woodworking for hitting your chisel. And of course curved so that as, as you swing you hit it straight on. Rubber mallets so you're not damaging ideas. These are called dead blow hammers. They actually have lead pellets inside and or sand. And when you hit something the whole idea is one hit and it doesn't bounce quite often used for chisels as well, so you only get that single hit and you have a little more control. This is one of my old antique hammers I got, which is back from the 20s. And again, this is quite often used with chisels. Yet another style, again, each one of these hammers has 13 different names, depending on who you talk to. Um, this one quite often called engineering hammer or a drilling hammer. And basically what it is, is basically a small sledge. Similar to that, is more of a blacksmith style and the blacksmith style is easily recognizable because they usually have a narrow face on one end so as you're hitting the metal you can actually stretch the metal outwards as it's good and hot. We have magnetic tack hammers. You can tell it's magnetic because there's usually a slot there and the whole idea is north pole, south pole. So you drop a tack onto it, it sticks and then you just hit it into your table or hit it into your furniture. We have again another style of soft type mallet where you have unscrewable tips and you can place these tips with different styles. I can replace them with even brass, I can replace them with copper, I can replace them in this case I got rubber on one side and hard plastic on the other and the same idea not to damage your items. And then of course one of the common ends of a lot of hammers is called a ball and these are ball peen hammers and the whole idea of that is when years ago when people were doing rivets and even these days some people still do riveting and you bring your rivet through a piece of metal you can use the ball there basically to hammer that piece of steel over and round it into a mushroom shape which basically locks it in place it's very commonly used in metal working when you're doing knives and that another category is framing hammers framing hammers come in all sorts of different styles different handles different lengths straight handle curved handle built-in special designs to try to make framing easier as well as various different prices. You can get framing hammers that go from a cheaper $10 one all the way up to a 200 and more. So with framing hammers, we can see we got quite a straight claw at the back. With a normal claw hammer, you can see quite the difference how curved it is. The main purpose, of course, is when you're dealing with wood and you have a nail embedded. If I tried using a standard claw hammer, I'd have to hit it pretty hard. And you can notice my hand's gonna hit that wood at the same time the claw's hitting the nail. Whereas if I'm using a framing hammer, I can come way out here and I can dig that in hard, get it underneath that nail to pull it out. As well, a lot of framing hammers, not all of them, quite often they have some kind of wafer pattern or something else on the top. And the whole purpose of these is to grab hold of that nail. So as it's hitting the head, it sticks and doesn't want to slide off compared to a perfectly flat one. As well with framing, said you can get curved ones, you can get straight ones, you can get different weights, that's a 22 ounce. This one here is actually only 14, but they claim based on the design and that, it'll do the job of a much heavier one. 
Hopefully you got a little sample of some of the hammers that are out there and next time you're out of store maybe you can find a new hammer to add to your collection or you can find one more specific to the job you're working on. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments again leave them below and we'll see you next video.